Hey, this is a first video in a series of tutorials where we go over how to make this animation using a Blender Python script. Hi, I'm Victor Stepanoff. I'll be guiding you through this tutorial series. I hope you'll enjoy it and learn something new. The script that we'll be working on in this tutorial series will be able to run under Blender 3.0 and the long-term support versions of Blender 2.83 and 2.93 on Windows, Linux, and Mac. The tutorial series consists of the following parts. We'll start off with overviewing the tutorial series and setting up our helper code. In the second video, we'll start adding functionality to our Python script by writing code that will deform our curve. After that, we'll add a shape key to control the deformation. Then, we'll need to animate the shape key we added. Part five, we'll create a stack of curves with an animation offset. Following that, we'll add some color into the scene by creating a material with Python. Before we finish, we'll light up the scene with an HDRI. And finally, I'll show you how you can achieve the same results with less code. As you might have guessed already, you are here in the tutorial series. We won't be starting off with a blank slate. We're going to have some helper code to make sure that we can iterate on our Python script without worrying about any Python setup issues. Before we start, I want you to have this mental model in your head. Don't think of code in terms of lines. Think of code in terms of chunks of functionality. You will only dive into these chunks when you need to change or update something. For example, the code that we'll be looking at in just a minute is the scene setup code. The scene setup code will clear everything from the scene, set the scene properties, and add a camera. So every single time we run this code, this three things are going to happen. You can actually even forget about what three things will happen and just think of, okay, this is the setup scene thing. This is going to run at the start of the script every single time I hit the run button. Don't get lost in the code. Think of the big picture. Let's get the code that we'll be starting off with. You'll find a link to this code in the description under start code. Once you're in GitHub, make sure that the name of the file right here at the top is color slices part one done pi. As soon as you've done that, head on over here to raw, select all of this by hitting control A and then control C to copy, open Blender, go into the scripting workspace right here, new, and then paste the code in. Before we start going over the code, Make sure you have that mental model in your head that we were just discussing a minute ago. If you have any questions while we're going over the code, make sure to ask them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them. Before we start, let's save the script we just copied by going up here, typing in uh, color lices.py, hitting enter, and uh, going up here and save, navigating to where you want to save this file and clicking save as. Also, let's make sure to save uh, the Blender uh, project uh, by also navigating uh, to a location where you feel comfortable saving this project and saving the blend file as well. As you might have noticed, there's almost 300 lines of code in this script. Don't let that scare you off. You don't need to understand every single line of code to finish this tutorial series. You got to take it step by step, keeping that big picture in mind of what we're trying to do here. We're going to go over different parts of the code as needed and show you how it's going to look in Blender, like what it does, like what functions are called and so on. To make sure that our code is readable, we're going to be using groups of code called functions. Function is just a group of code that has a name, a set of parameters, and a body. You can add some kind of comment right here. This is a comment that tells us more information. Python won't care about this. And then some kind of statements right below. Functions are like building blocks. We're going to use them to assemble our script. For example, one function can call another function. Uh, this setup scene is right above here. And as you can see, uh, it also inside of it calls other functions like clean scene, set up a scene props, uh, and set up camera and so on. Let's take a look at main. 
uh, main is the entry point of our script and it runs the setup scene uh, function. Uh, the setup scene is defined above right here and it has a number of lines uh, defining the FPS, uh, the number of seconds that our loop is going to be. It's going to also set uh, the file format, the output file format that it's going to use for the animation. In this case, it's a PNG uh, image file. This is going to be the path where the image files are going to be saved as we're rendering the scene. Uh, down below is the random seed function. We'll get, we're going to take a closer look at this later in the tutorial series once we can have an example that you can actually use and see what, what effect it has on Blender. Down here we have the call to the clean scene function. It's a very important function that will allow us to quickly iterate on our scripts. It will clean the scene, removing everything from the scene like objects, collections, materials, and so on. Let's go and uh, find this. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to press Control T to bring up uh, this menu right here. And then I'm going to uh, paste in the name of the clean scene function. Uh, press this wrap so we can wrap around. It's going to be at the top of uh, this function. And let's see here. Um, I'm going to press Control T again to hide that. This function right here uh, is going to help us clean everything, delete all, everything from the scene. If you want to find out more, I made a whole video that you can check out uh, by following this link. I'll add this link in the description as well for you to uh, watch the details of this function. So let's go back. Uh, next, we have the setup uh, scene properties. Uh, let's take a closer look at that. I'm going to paste that in right here. I'm going to find next and uh, I'm going to close that. And now let's take a look at this function. And here we're setting up the last frame of the scene. So uh, however many uh, frames we have in our scene, we're setting uh, the background color to black. So this is an RGB color right here. So the world background is now black after we run this. Uh, we're sending the FPS and when I'm going to run this, I want you to look at the FPS right here on the right. Next, set up the current frame, the starting frame, and all these EV uh, properties down here. Uh, as you can see, we're um, setting up the bloom uh, and setting up the samples for uh, EV and so on. Setting the render resolution to 1080 by 1080. Let's take a closer look at that. I'm going to copy this and paste that. As you can see, the re resolution we're sending uh, to 1080 by 1080. Let's go back, go back and see uh, where we're calling this again. So after we set up all the scene properties, uh, we're going to set up the camera. We're going to put it at, at a position uh, of 0, 0, 5. So 5 is on the z-axis. It's going to be looking down. And we're going to get some colors. Uh, we're going to take a look at that uh, more closely when we're doing the material for our mesh. Uh, all right. So with that, let's uh, run it. But before we run it, I want you to make sure that you can see the changes that are going to happen in this uh, uh, project. Open up the output properties. And look at the resolution. Remember, we're going to be setting this resolution to 1080 by 1080. We're going to be changing the frame rate to 30. Also, remember, we're cleaning up, the, cleaning the scene, removing everything from the scene. So right now, the scene has the, the camera, default cube, and the light. Make sure you notice that before we run it. I'm going to go up here, uh, hit run, and boom. Uh, we have... Uh, the resolution set right here. We have uh, the frame rate set to 30. Nothing is in the scene except the camera and the tracking empty. Uh, let's see, I'm going to press control space on the viewport. Let's see what we have in our scene. As you can see, there's a camera and also we're adding empty that the camera is tracking. So as you can see, it's going to be easy, easier for us to set up the camera if uh, the camera is looking at the tracker. Every single time we run the script, nothing really changes. And if I start adding uh, meshes into the scene, you can see that they won't 
persist as soon as I uh, hit the run. So they're going to disappear. To fix that, we need to start adding these meshes and moving them in the script itself. So I'm going to add an icos here, right here. At the bottom uh, on the left, I'm going to copy this code. This is the code that adds the icosphere into the scene. I'm going to go into the main function right here, hit enter, paste that in. Uh, I'm going to actually move this by hitting uh, G and then just dragging it to another place. So you can see that as soon as I run the script right here, uh, this is going to disappear. A new icosphere is going to appear in the origin of our scene. So let's run it. Boom, it's there. Uh, let's change the location uh, to, I don't know, uh, one, two, oh, two, I don't know, three, uh, and then just run it. And now, as you can see, it moved into this uh, position. And that's how we're going to be working on the script. We're going to be continuing to add something in the script and then hitting uh, the run button so it's going to reset everything and every single time we're going to be iterating like this on this Python script To summarize we went over the main building blocks that the scene setup consists of Now we're able to focus on the code that will make this animation happen I hope you're enjoying this video and learning something new Give this video a like and leave a comment below in the next video, we'll be looking at how to deform a curve with some noise. Make sure to subscribe to not miss a video.